optimizing fonts and images. Okay, so fonts play a significant role in the design of a website. But using custom fonts in your project can affect performance if that font's custom font needs to be fetched or loaded. For example, you want to use a Google font. And Google font, you know that you have to import that one with a link. You can do it through CSS or you can do it through a meta tag link in the HTML. Now, your system, your application is first going to take a look at your default font. Uh, font or system font first. The reason is going to do that if for some reason, let's say your Google font, because it's a fetch, because it's loading from an external place, it might take a milliseconds delay. If that's the case, then your application is actually going to start loading your uh, fallback font, which is your system fonts, right? So it's going to render your application with your system fonts. And then when the Google font is available, it's going to switch back to that, your custom Google fonts or whatever fonts that you want to use. What that happens is it might create a cumulative layout shift. If you want to know more about this one, link will be in the description. Google actually has a good article on this one. So for the new font and the difference between the default font, now there is a text size, spacing, layout changes. So it kind of, for the user, it might be, it might look like that the entire page kind of like a jump. So those kind of situations that you don't really want for your users to experience. So it's better to, Instead of fetching your font from an outside, we are going to deploy the font, our custom font, with the application itself. So next, it uses next slash font module. It downloads the font files at build time and hosts them with our static assets. This means when a user visits our application, there are no additional network requests for fonts which would impact performance. Let's add a custom Google font to our application to see how this works, okay? So let's go back to our UI. We are already here. Let's create a new file called fonts.ts. So let's go ahead and create this fonts.ts file. And um, we will use this file to keep the fonts that will be used throughout our application. And it's going to be in curly braces. We're gonna say enter. That's the font. Uh, it's going to come from next. And uh, next, we want it to font. And it's going to come from Google. And here, we are just going to export a const. Enter is equals to, we're going to make this, make use of this one. It's going to take an object. And it's actually going to take a subset. So the subset is. An array so Latin this is an array array because you can add uh, more subsets if you want now let's use this to our root level because this is the font that we want to utilize uh, on our all over application just like our global CSS we are going to come here and import in the root layout and uh, we are going to just get the enter which we just created. And here in our body, we are just going to go ahead and do a class name. That's how you utilize your custom fonts using a class name. It's going to be a JavaScript curly brace. And we are actually going to, you can directly write this enter dot class name and save it. It's going to work. We also want to add, uh, because you're using Tailwind, right? Tailwind has a nice class called entire alias we smooths out the font it's not necessary we're gonna we're gonna just use it so in in order for us to use it let me go ahead and uh, cut this and open a um, template string we are going to use this as a variable so let's put it here and then add in all right now let's go back to our application and uh, let's go ahead and inspect this one and as you can see here The font family is inter right here for the body. Now we can also add fonts to specific elements, right? So let's say we want to just add specific font for a specific text on a page. So let's go back to our Visual Studio code. We are going to go to uh, the fonts file here and let's add another all right, so let's take a look at this one. This is also we're going to export because this is a different file we want to use. This is a specific use case. I'm going to call this the same name, but with the lowercase. 
and same same principle some fonts actually need you need to pass weight okay so weight as you can see here typescript is telling you so we are going to go ahead and put this weight here and you can actually add an instead of like specifying one weight like 400 or whatever we can specify an array and here we're just going to say 400 and that's what's available right here and also 700 like that and then come back here then we could do our subset and we are still going to use latin okay now save this now let's go back to our page the tsx and here so in this particular class name welcome to acme we are going to use a class name that is going to be here this is already with a template string so i can just simply add this one so look i am importing this font in a page and not the root layout because root layout is going to affect everything right so we want to import this one okay and here same concept we're just going to utilize our variable let's go back to this is now a different font that's how you optimize your fonts it's pretty easy so let's close all this and then let's talk about the acme logo so let's talk about the image optimization part of this so let's go back to our page.tsx and here as you can see here uh, it's a comment out an acme logo and um, comment this out there you go as you can see here acme logo now appears now let's talk about optimizing images so why do you want to optimize images next.js can serve static assets like images under the top level uh, folder called public as you can see here all right files inside public can be referenced in our application okay with regular html we would add an image as follows so if it's let's, this is an example right we'll add just like this one right we're gonna have a source we're gonna have let's say hero.png and then an alt tag screenshot of um, dashboard, something like that. This is how you're going to utilize your HTML image tag. In our application, though, there's no there's no issues with this one. You can utilize this one, but it's not optimized. You have to optimize your images manually yourself. But Next.js actually gives you an option, an image component from next slash image. So the image component does pretty much a lot of things that preventing layout shift automatically when images are loading, resize images to avoid shipping large images to device with a smaller viewport, lazy loading images by default, image load as they enter the viewport, and serving images in a modern formats like WebP and AVIV when the browser supports it. So a lot of things that you would have to do manually, it does that for you. Now, granted these optimizations comes uh, with a price if you're installing this one to Vercel, you do have to pay i think at certain after a certain point for this image uh, optimization so keep that in mind so let's go ahead and add a desktop hero image so if we look inside the public folder you see there are a couple of images one is the hero desktop.png this is our desktop and then hero mobile this is what it looks like here now these two images are completely different and they will be shown depending if the user's device is a desktop or a mobile so in our application let's go back to our page.tsx let's close this import the component from next images so let's go ahead and import this one so what we want to do is import image from next image we want to get here add hero images here so let's go down and then we are just going to open up this is actually works exactly like and native HTML image components and then here it's gonna take some properties just like your regular native image tag it's gonna take a source and here we want to do actually we don't need the curly braces here we can just say hero dash desktop dot PNG it's giving you an error because it's actually telling you must have an old prop do this 
So we want to do this image. If you're using this image component from Next.js, they want you to use width and height. And they want this because I'm going to specify this based on the source of the image so that they can actually maintain the or minimize the layout shift for this one. So it's a good idea to do this. So here we are also, let's go back, give a class name. Now this is a Tailwind class name. What we want to do is we want to say that on the mobile, we're going to say hidden, but on the desktop, we want to say should show as a block, okay? And then let's do the alt, and it's going to be screen shots of the dashboard project showing desktop version, okay? So let's go back to our application now. Let's see how it looks. And it does give us an error. Okay, unhandled runtime error, fail to parse source hero desktop PNG on next image. If using relative image, it must start with a slashing. Uh, this basically saying that it, there has to be a slash here, which make, all right. There you go. And let's go back to our application. Let's do the same thing, but with mobile device. So what we want to do is we want to just copy paste same image component and here we want to just use mobile we want to change the width to 560 and the height we want to do 620 and here we want to do first uh, on the mobile we want to show it so block and media query will be hidden so desktop would be hidden and that's going to be block. So alt screenshot of the dashboard project showing mobile version. Save it. Let's go back to our project. Now let's do inspect to a mobile version. There you go. As you can see here, you can. Now the desktop images are not showing. The mobile version is only showing. Great. Your homepage now has a custom font and the hero image.